This is a 2016 BMW 340i. This is a sedan of BMW's 3 Series. The 340i is a front engine inline 6 rear wheel drive vehicle. This 340i is powered by BMW's B58 inline 6. Now, I feel like this car, the biggest thing about this new 3 Series is the engine. The B58 is supposed to replace the N55 of the 335i. The 335i's have started to gain that collective that they are good with bolt-ons. You can build a lot of power out of them. They're kind of almost like a modern day Supra because they're inline six, they're turbocharged, and they respond really well to building power. The B58 engine in this car takes that one step further. The B58 is a three liter inline six with a twin scroll turbocharger and dual Vanos. It basically has all the technology BMW could throw at the car. BMW claims this car makes 322 horsepower at the crank. Driving it, I don't believe that number. So I had to search and I found some people have done a baseline dyno at the wheels making 320 horsepower. So if we factor, let's just say like 20% drivetrain loss, that's about 380 at the crank almost. It could be more, could be a little less. I will tell you one thing though, this car is quick. It's deceivingly quick. It is an Autobahn missile. All right, let's do a little first gear uh, rip. Oh, what's traction? <laughs> Oh, that turbo comes on so fast and it holds so consistently. That's one thing the Germans know how to do is a turbocharged car where you don't have to pick mid-range or high-end or low-end. It'll give it to you all. Oh man, even once at low RPMs, you got to give it a second and it just kicks you right in the ass and launches you. But let's, let's do that again. Let's get a little cannonball run. Oh, what's traction? Hi, how are you? She didn't even notice. All right. Oh my god, dude. This is... Oh yeah. Oh, we were spinning a little tire on corner exit in third gear. A little bit of maintenance throttle. A little bit, a little bit. Gun it. A little bit of brake. Turn in. Oh man. This thing is a weapon. It will never be used like this. But this thing... It rips. This has the ELSD in it, so basically it, when it senses wheel spin, it puts brakes to the opposite wheel in the rear to help mimic locking up. Even in third gear, exiting the corner, the butt started to wiggle out a little bit. Couldn't contain it. It's stupid how fast this car is. I don't believe the 320 horsepower that they claim it has. This is way quicker. And there's a lot of that below the curve, and by below the curve, I mean, where you get your peak power, there's still a lot of power before and after that. All right, let's get onto somewhere where we can actually stretch the legs out. All right, first gear, let's uh, let's gun it. Taking it all the way up to the 7,000 RPM red line. Oh my God, this thing is fast. Bye, Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> there it's it, it might be more mid-range derived power but it doesn't start to fall off until the last 500 rpm and even then you can barely notice it this thing is quick this thing is quick i know some of you are watching and still thinking it says 320 horsepower it can't be that fast but man this thing will blow the doors off of a lot of cars and it's not even the high end Let's flip it around real quick. <laughs> this car's ultimate goal is to make sure to combine your back with the seat as best as possible. That's what this car strives to do. And the great part is BMW has been known for awesome brakes and this car proves that you still have a lot of brake to rely on you have that confidence here so you can take your autobahn cruise missile and still bring it down to speed reliably all this power is shot through a zf8 speed automatic you can get this with a get rag six speed which is pretty cool i think i'd rather have the six speed but this automatic for an automatic is really good i've been in sport mode just using the paddles the whole time and it still feels quite engaging 
The shifts are quick, precise, and matches for you. It, it, there's no delay in between pressing the paddle shifter and having it shift. This car, <laughs> just, just cruising around on a highway makes this car fun. And then the handling's actually quite amazing for a sedan. It's not, it's not gonna be an M3 or M4. That's kind of where the car starts to taper off though in the performance category. It still gives you a lot of mechanical grip and you can put a lot of steering input into this and get a lot more turn in out of it. The steering's fast. In sport mode, the steering stiffens up with the electric steering rack and it feels great. It still feels like it has good feedback. It's still, it doesn't have a numb feeling, but there are other cars that provide more feedback. I think it's funny when you shift and you're in sport mode. It uh, it uh, shows you what uh, what gear you're in, but it says M in front of it first, and that might be for manual and then whatever gear. But it's just kind of funny, be like, oh, we're in M2, and then we're in M3, and then M4, and I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. Oh, this thing's fun actually for how how much this looks like to the eye an old person's car. It's it's still fun. It's still fun to drive. I, with these 335s, including the E90 up, I'm disappointed by by the differential, the ELSD. Even first gear making the U-turn, I pinned it, and it didn't really lock up. Didn't really lock up, it's just, it's disappointing. And what's unfortunate with these, I'm not sure about this, the F30 generation, but they're extremely difficult to put a real limited slip in because of the way the diff is designed. I know some of you E90 335i guys know what I'm talking about. This is such a fun sedan though. If if this is like this is like ideal, maybe ideal daily driver in Los Angeles traffic, that's still kind of fun. You still have plenty of power. You want to put in sport mode and control the gears, you still can. But it's still an automatic where you can stay in traffic on the 401 or whatever highway and not have your left foot hurt by the time you get to work. It's quiet, it flies under the radar. It's a really fun car. Visibility is great. I feel like I'm kind of on an older car where some older cars, they give you that visibility where you're basically a front row of a movie and you can see everything happening in front of you. That's what I feel like with this car. It is a big car, but it doesn't feel like it. It feels like a medium sized car. Even though the three series is supposed to be a medium sized car by today's standards, by other generation standards, it doesn't feel huge. Like comparing to, I feel the dimensions of a 2015 up Mustang are the same as this car. And comparing those dimensions to this, they're the same. This feels more nimble. It feels like you know where each corner of the wheel is. And, oh man, it's just easy to place where you want it for a heavy car. It's, it's amazing when a heavy car like this can do stuff like that. And I want to give props to the ZF transmission. It, it's quick. It's remarkably quick. Uh -oh. we'll, we'll cut to a clip real quick of me just going through the gears real quick, pressing the buttons. You'll see how it's, it's analog. So for this part of the video, I'm trying something new. I want to just give you 30 seconds of sound, albeit intake or exhaust, a combination of both. I'm going to start doing this in my reviews. No talking, just sound. And we're going to start it off with this car. Surprisingly, this car sounds good outside. You can't really hear it from the inside. There's a lot of sound deadening. But the owner of this car owns a Porsche also. And without looking, he fired this up. And I thought he fired up the Porsche. And it isn't. Like, this exhaust uncorked would really rival the M3 and M4 currently. Because this car sounds great. The M3 and M4 currently are under fire for not, you know, sounding like an M3 and M4. This car, I'm impressed. So, we're going to cut to a clip now of just pure sound.
can't help it, guys. I, I know there's other things to talk about, but man, the power. <laughs> oh man, this would be fun to roll up to some, some kids with their Subarus and just walk all over them. And you still get great fuel economy because it's an eight speed. That's pretty cool. All right, so I actually didn't have DSC off. I just had traction control off. Let's see what this ELSD really has going for it. All right, flip Yui. Okay, it gets a little rowdy. It, you can feel it losing it. Like it, it'll get a little rowdy for a second, but then it's like, ah, I can't, can't handle any more than that. Whatever. All right. Cool. Cool. So now let's talk like mature adults. I'm probably not the best person for that, but let's talk about this interior. The interior is awesome. It's a comfy place to be. I would love to take this car for a 12 hour road trip. The seats are comfortable. They look awesome with the red on it. Um, they hold you in quite well also. Like BMW knew someone would try to take a hard corner in this. Thank you, BMW. Seats are great. Everything you touch feels good. I love BMW steering wheels. I don't know why, they just feel good. The paddles are perfectly nestled in your fingertips, ready for you to fire off the next gear. I think the one thing I don't like about the paddle shifters and the shifting is it doesn't give you that PDK sense of bam, bam, every time. It's very just business. It's very German, just we're shifting, no, 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 no motion, shift. The blinker has that BMW blinker where you tap it down and it'll blink a couple times. But it also has that one where you fully depress it, it comes back up and it'll keep blinking until you actually turn. I had to turn hard to turn it off right there because I just turned it on. But you can cancel that. Let's say you put it on, you left it on. If you do the quick tap down, not the full depression, it'll actually just cancel for you. So one cool thing that this B58 does other than force your eyeballs into the back of your head is they have something called the heat encapsulation system. I believe I said that correctly. And I don't have the gist of how it works exactly. I couldn't find any info on that. But basically what BMW has done is they've made it so that the car the motor itself will retain heat for up to 36 hours. Now it won't be up to 200 Fahrenheit at full operating temperature, but it'll re retain enough heat so the next day when you come to start the car up again, it's pretty close to warmed up. They did this for two reasons. Uh, emissions on startup, because your car pollutes the most on cold start, and you get the most wear on cold start as well. So by being able to keep the car warmer while sitting helps reduce that greatly. Honestly, the owner, this car is awesome. The owner of this car has the perfect German fleet. This is his daily. And it's still an entertaining to drive daily, especially when you gotta hop on the highway. And he's also got his Porsche. And it's hard to make a decision sometimes. The Porsche is a naturally acerbated down your throat sports car. And this is a date sedan that is ready to launch you to the moon at command. I know which one I'd personally pick. But to some, some would prefer this car, this sleeper, this torque monster, this car that gives it to you when you want it. Just like the gear shift, it gives it to you right when you want it. When you want power, foot down, it gives it to you right then and there. You don't have to wind it out like a normally aspirated car. Everything's accessible to you. Everything's fast for you. Every, it's luxury. That is luxury to have everything available to you immediately. Like having the car warm the next day. You don't have to wait for it to warm up or drive it cold and further any uh, any wear caused by that. And I think that's where BMW is going with this, not only on a technology standpoint and efficiency standpoint, but also on a luxury standpoint of being able to give it to you when you want it right now and then and there. I can't wait to see what the aftermarket's gonna do with this car. The aftermarket, once these dwindle down in price and people start modifying them, these are going to be sought out. Look it up, people can build power with these cars. And one thing that gives car is kind of that legendary status or helps resale value in the long run is when people start to figure out that you can modify a car and build a lot of power out of it easily that really helps resale value because it it helps with that instant gratification that people are looking for and most mo people that modify cars aren't buying these cars new they're buying them secondhand 
So once word gets around with this, you can already see it with the 335 E90. This is gonna be a popular car, I'll tell you right now. Even the automatics are gonna be popular. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed driving this car. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this. What do you think the 340i means to you guys? If you guys agree with what I think about its long term, if you agree with the car, or if you disagree, please leave a comment and like the video and subscribe. I'll make more car reviews, vlogs, track days, etc. Thanks for watching, guys.